Hi everyone, Lee Veris here bringing you another Photo Tech Tuesday. I'm going to talk about disruptive technology and a little personal history, something I haven't shared before. I want to dig into my past experiences with disruptive technology and provide some perspective on the latest disruption sweeping the creative world. Uh, yeah, we're talking about AI rendering technology like Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, or DALI. But first, I'd like to share a story from my early days as a photographer in the world of Hollywood print advertising. Okay, it's 1989, and I've been busy photographing video box comps. These are designs for that new VHS video rental industry. Uh, and uh, the job was relatively simple and, and lucrative. I just had to photograph a VHS box with pasted on photo prints and press on type made to look like the box that would soon be printed for the thousands of copies that would be available for rent. Anyway, this uh, project came up where the studio did not have any, any existing key art for this dreadful B-movie about a brain surgeon that places the brains of wealthy old people into young bodies. I was asked to create a photograph that would be the video box cover. I was sent a pencil sketch of the concept and had to execute the photograph within a week. And it didn't matter that none of the models I assembled were actually in the movie. The studio didn't care. This was basically a straight to video movie that had only seen limited distribution in the Southern drive-in circuit. So I had to find models I had to rent props, construct a set, light the scene and photograph it with a four by five view camera. I managed to do it within one week of receiving the assignment. So I was thinking, how, how would this be done today? After about 10 minutes, this is what I came up with using Midjourney. Not even 10 minutes. I, I asked Midjourney to make a photograph of a surgeon with a hypodermic needle standing between two patients, one old woman, one young woman on hospital beds, Frankenstein equipment in the background, volumetric lighting with an aspect ratio of 27 to 40. It's the dimensions of a movie poster, by the way. Uh, and I added the type here uh, from the original image. Now, in less time than it would have taken the art director to call me and describe the assignment, he could have gotten something very usable. Okay, so the doctor in this image is a woman, and there aren't two patients, but still, adding to the text prompt and, and generating some variations. Uh, now, again, you know, forget that Midjourney can't do math. I did ask for two patients. The results are more than just usable. They're actually better than what I came up with in a solid week of work. Here's another one, just tweaking the text prompt a little bit. So if you're a photographer that aspires to do advertising photo illustration, that is creating images that illustrate some concept, then you should be worried. This is the dawn of AI imaging, and it's only getting better and more pervasive from here. So <laughs> no wonder Hollywood screen actors and writers went on strike. Every creative worker is facing potentially catastrophic decline in income potential when they can be replaced by software that doesn't demand compensation, doesn't get tired, and generates usable images, music, or writing in the minutes. At the very least, this will cause prices for creative services to drop. However, every paradigm shift leads to new opportunities, and I can share my own experiences with this. Shortly after completing the, uh, completing the Immortalizer assignment, again, early 1989, I was introduced to computer imaging at Electric Paint. It's a Quantel paint box facility in Hollywood. Uh, the paint box was a new computer system designed to manipulate high-res photographs. I saw a computer technician push a stylus to move an image, one of my photographs, of a monster claw, you can see it here, into position to hold the earth as if it was a basketball being pushed into the hoop. Okay, game over. I saw this moving this in real time on a big high-res monitor. It was at the time, just amazing. And I knew at this point that it would change the industry and I had to get into this. 
Not long after that, I was exploring a, an extremely primitive digital camera that uh, were just starting to be developed. Uh, none of my photographic peers thought much of the low-res pixelated images in those, those cameras produced, but, but you all know what happened. Just like how the Macintosh computer made typesetting obsolete, digital camera technology was going to completely reshape the commercial photography, photographic industry and anything that supported film processing scanning, printing, and distribution of physical assets would basically wither away. Jump on board or be left at the train station. It sounds like easy advice today, but back then, most established photographers were very resistant to the coming revolution. You can take my film from my cold, dead fingers. <laughs> I heard that so many times. Of course, eventually everyone would have to accept the new technology. And as an early adopter, I became highly in demand as a consultant, teacher, trainer for many successful photographers in Los Angeles. I was the first passenger on the train and there were plenty of first class seats ready to occupy before it left the station. So my message to current or aspiring photographers, don't wait. You have to actively investigate these new AI tools now. Look for ways to lever, leverage the power of AI for yourself. We're, we're still early enough that completely new opportunities will emerge. And you'll want to be the first ones occupying those first class seats when the train leaves the station. Okay, that's it for now. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, so you won't miss another Photo Tech Tuesday. And I'll see you in the next Photo Tech Tuesday. Thanks a lot.